Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it bull trap because that's what this setup looks like to me. It looks like we are about to trap a whole lot of bulls as people start to get excited about the market again. And what do you mean by trapping the bulls? By trapping the bulls, I mean as the market turns and heads south in the next strong wave to the downside, you're going to trap a lot of people that thought that they could get in and um, and catch, uh, catch some deals and get in on the next big move to the upside. I just don't think that's going to happen. Let's talk about the early wave picture. But before I go there, let's just review what we've got on the chart. This is a daily view. It was up the NASDAQ 100. You can see that right here. NDX was up 74.658 on Friday, 74.58. And for the week, look at here. It was up 593.88 points. So big move, big move over the last four weeks in here. Huge move down, big bounce back up. I mean, think about throwing a basketball off a roof onto a concrete driveway. And this is the kind of bounce that you're going to get, especially when you get as big a move to the downside that we got. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm seeing in here is this candlestick pattern right here, this, this last bar. This looks like what we call a hanging man. Now, typically a hanging man uh, is a bearish type of formation, and it usually occurs after you've had a, a, uh, a rising move like what we just had over the last few weeks. Okay, so now I'm going to be on heavy alert for Monday, Tuesday. Do we get, you know, a turn down in here? Is this the top? If we continue to push higher, I would expect that we would probably get some pretty significant resistance at this high right here where we got selling kicking back in back in uh, early March. The high was 9,000 on NDX. Okay, so uh, we'll have to watch that. I do think we're getting to the point where we're getting ready to turn down the wave structure. If we look at the 65-minute view in here, let me adjust the screen if I can. Okay. What we're focused on is this last leg up of the ABC, the C wave, okay? And I think this last of the, uh, that we're in the fifth wave within that C wave. And uh, right now we're fleshing out this wave count, what we call minuet level. This is minute, minute degree wave, minuet degree wave. You just keep taking it down one degree in here looking for a uh, five wave structure. I think there's a decent chance that we've got at the high that occurred on the first hour of the morning on Friday. So we'll see if that holds or not coming this Monday. Uh, we've had a pretty deep retracement, 71 point, let me look at my notes, 71.2% on a retrace in here of wave two as compared to wave one. And uh, so we're right up in this level here. This is kind of we're, we're above what I normally target for a wave two, but a wa there's no rule that says a wave two can't, you know, go higher. A wave two can go all the way back to the start of wave one. It just can't go above the start of wave one. I mean, that's the rule. Okay, so that's what we've got right now. And when we look at the RSI, the RSI is 67.1 on the RSI. Now, I use a 10-day RSI, so that's my readings here. And uh, this is not unusual in a bear move to get this kind of rally back uh, for an RSI reading. Okay, let me go back to here. I want to look back to the fall of 2008 and look at to see, because I think we had a couple other hanging men back then. Let me scan back here and go back over here to the rally Let's see. Okay, so a little bit of one right here at the rally back that occurred in October. A little, it looks like one, although the, um, you know, the tail in here uh, wasn't nearly as long as what we had back here or the, what we have today. But that occurred at the top of that uh, counter trend rally, that uh, peak on December 3rd, and then all hell broke loose as uh, selling kicked in in December. So we'll watch and see, do we get a turn down? from this high that occurred on Friday. All right, that's the NDX. Let's take a look at the semiconductor index, the SOX. We have the same kind of picture. I'm going to focus on the LA wave picture. Here's what we're looking at. 
It's the same kind of picture. And actually, the candle, we got a, a similar type candle that's occurring in here. You know, it's not as picture perfect as what we just looked at, but it's pretty close. And where are we in terms of the retracement? We're just above 61.8%. Now, what am I showing here? I'm showing C versus A. So when I'm looking at this analysis, A, B, C, uh, you, the target that you usually have on a zigzag is that you're thinking, okay, C uh, should equal A. You know, that's my first target. And, and it could be any kind of Fibonacci relationship, like 61.8% or so, that type of thing. But one of the targets would be, hundred, you know, equal to, and we're very close to that at 237.82 in here. Uh, so we'll see, again, we'll be on the same kind of breakdown watch that we're looking for. It's interesting how the last three days, we had this move right here. In the last three days, we just had the volume drop off pretty steadily here on the semiconductor index. Okay, so that's the SOX. I wanted to look at the put-to-call ratio. Now, you know, we track this and review, review this every day with the insider members on my website, okay? And we got to an extreme reading in terms of bearishness back in March, okay? And so what this was telling us is that a bounce was coming. What you don't know is how big is the bounce, okay? But this was telling us a bounce was coming. And then what's happening is very typical uh, reaction after that, where this is the 10-day. These are the actual put-to-call readings. Again, this is equity only, right from the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. And then these are the 10-day moving averages of that, okay? So now all of a sudden, the 10-day has been dropping and dropping and dropping, and it's down to 0.66. So we're getting very close to, actually, we're right in that zone where I look back in 2008, where we had a whole series of these kinds of extremes and the bounces that occurred in the whole move down, okay? And then what kind of bullishness did we get before you then topped out? And this is the kind of level we got right into this area. So we're either at there or very close, okay? So that's our readings that we're looking at on the put to call ratios. Let's take a look at gold. Okay, here's the picture for GLD, and uh, it was down $3.14 on Friday uh, for the week. You can see we had a potential little reversal candle in here. We we're down actually $0.12. Cents. Uh, so we'll see if we get the follow-through that I'm looking for. I think this move is done. Let's go back to the daily view, and then I'm going to drill in. Let's look at the, um, the Elliott Wave picture. Okay, we got thrown a little curve. I really thought we had the high in here, and we got this big downdraft to the uh, and and really looked like we had a first wave move, and then we got this counter trend move. And once we started to see how this counter trend move was unfolding, it was pretty clear that we were in a five wave move, and you don't you don't have a five wave counter trend move, okay, like this. So, you know, thinking this was one and this was two, and once we identified that it was five waves, then we knew something else was going on and we punched to, to new highs in here. So I think right now there's a pretty good chance that this is complete. I'm gonna drill down and look at the hourly view. Let me zoom back out a little bit, okay? So here's what we're looking at. I have five wave move and uh, minute wave one, two, three, four, and five. And within the fifth minute wave, I believe that we've got one, two, three, four, and five complete. Now, the alternate would be that one really didn't complete until here, and that this is two, this is three, and then this is four. But I think the fact that when I connect a trend line between one, two and four, which contains the entire impulsive move, and that we broke down out of that on Friday, I think the odds increase that the uh, the new C wave is underway. Okay, so I think that we are in intermediate wave one of primary wave C. And where are we going with that? We're we're heading down to the downside. Okay, I think I'll have a lot more um, confidence in that if we get a close below this level right here, which is 154.66. Okay, so that's the picture. Let's go to the weekly view. Here's what I'm talking about, okay? We've had a big, from the high in 2011, we have, we're undergoing a big zigzag pattern. Five waves down, 
three ways back, and now we're looking for five ways down in the C wave. Okay, so that's the picture. That's what we're looking at, and we'll see if we get the follow through this week that we're looking for. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, YouTube subscriber, hit that little subscribe button. And uh, if you'd like more of this kind of information, head on over to my website at joehenches.net. We talk about all of this on all the markets every day and trade ideas, everything else like we talk about here. Uh, just check out the membership and uh, become a member. All right, everyone, that's it for this weekend. Have a great weekend and be safe.